Toasty, thank you. He says, do you guys think HSK is on the trade block? Um, I don't see why he wouldn't be. I, I, I would say wouldn't wouldn't a reason to sell him be because of the year he's had, which is like you're selling high on a player that's got another year of control. Um, Dude, they're not. I, I, I again, I don't know if they're going to sell off Hater and Snell well, and other pieces. Knows. Nobody knows. They might have this delusional thought in their head that there's still time and no, there's still they hope. They don't. They don't. Okay. They don't. There's no way, Jim. They're eight games out of a playoff spot. It, Dude, I don't over. put I don't put ineptitude past this team because this team in the front office uh has it. Yeah, but they're not listen, you, you can be critical of some decision making and processing. I mean, they're they're not idiots. I mean, they're not. I hope it's not. not idiotic the decisions that they've made. You may disagree with some of the decisions they've made, but from a baseball like, listen, I get it. You got to sell three million tickets, and they're on pace to do that. And you don't want to perce- be perceived as like selling off all parts. That's why I don't think Juan Soto gets traded. No, I'd be surprised if Hassan King got traded. I'm just saying I would consider basically at this point everything. I'm not trading Juan Soto, but I would trade Blake Snell and Josh Hader, and I think you can get away with that. And I still think they can sell seats in 2023, and I still think it makes them better in Here, 2024. It, here's what happens at the trade deadline if they trade off Snell and Hader. That effectively is the white flag from the Padres front office. And that will signal fans to throw the white flag too. And they are so knee deep in making sure that they have sellout after sellout after sellout yeah, after sellout the tickets. after they've sellout the tickets. after sellout. No, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, if they if they trade Blake Snell and, and, and Josh Hader the deadline, that Nothing is that, no, no. That is them saying, we quit, we're done. Who cares? I, I'm just telling you. Do, do you think they, that they're, that they're going to be okay with that? And that's not a, that's a, By the way, if they did that, a half season after making all these moves, another fucking just disastrous look on Preller in this front office. No, it's an amazing look. That I completely disagree. Stop, Sully. It's the right move. It's the right move. But so why also, is that a it, bad look? That's the right look because it didn't work out. And well, you, that's, you, that's fine. I mean, sometimes you have to you have to admit the feat. I mean, that's okay. Okay. I mean, it's better than keeping them. By the way, the tickets are sold. There's no way. If Peter Siler's in a position was like, you know, we could move another 75,000 tickets in our final 31 home games. So we're going to keep Blake Snell to move 2,000 tickets a night for his Look, I, dude, three home I, starts. I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. They should move Snell regardless. They should move Hater regardless. I'm just trying to tell you what I think they're thinking and what I think that they could try to twist people to be like, we're still not done yet. Like, you know, hey, we played better baseball well, in the last 11 games. But here's like, the thing. Padres fans aren't, aren't stupid either. That if they hold on to Blake Snell and Josh Hader at the deadline, that's not like, hey, let's all go to the ballpark tonight. You know, I mean, if the deadline passes and you have Blake Snell, you think that's a reason to go to Padres.com and buy tickets? No, I don't. But um, in their mind, they still think there's always a chance. And that's the wrong thinking. Um, Ruben, thank you. He says, uh, no Cosgrove Saturday morning in the eighth of the 1.52 ERA. We can go across all the bullpen. They moves. all fucking suck. It they've all been, but I mean, they've allowed runs in like a million consecutive games out of their bullpen. You could say that he should have stuck with Snell, um, into a sixth inning. Oh, you may be, you may be correct, by the way, with all this stuff. It, it hasn't worked out. No bullpen hasn't worked out. By the way, if he goes to Cosgrove, maybe they lose. Right. And if you know, nobody knows. Bob is on such a cold streak right now with those bullpen decisions. It it just feels like no matter what he does out of that bullpen, they're letting him down over and over and over again. Every time, every single move he makes is the wrong one, seemingly. Which is which tells you all you need to know about the state of the bullpen right now. Because every time you pull a card, if it's the wrong move, then maybe it's to some extent on the bullpen. You know? Dude, they had a one run lead with Josh Hare on the mound today. Like true. I mean, again, runner- like you can't tell me. There's another move that's different from that. And I saw a bunch of fucking people on social media saying they should have walked Harper. Are you like, shut up? Yeah, no, I don't get that. Yeah. Stop dealing. Stop. Stop it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, again, it's easy in hindsight. And I've made comments 
you know, before this year, as I think people should. I think it's fair to be critical of Bob Melvin. I don't think Bob Melvin will be here in 2024. I'd be, I'd be shocked if Bob Melvin's managing this team in 2024. But Which I'm is not an putting, indictment on this fucking front office. I'm not putting all these decisions with his bullpen on him. And oh, how could you, how could you yank Blake Snell after five innings? Because it's 104 degrees, and he had thrown a 30 pitches in the fifth inning, and he had the bases were loaded, and he got out of it. And he basically admitted to that fact afterwards. Said, you know, he's in a battle. You know, I'm thinking about the whole season. I'm not thinking about the sixth inning there. Um, yeah. And by the way, he's going to get paid. So everything's worked out hunky-dory for Blake Snell. Um, Murray, thank you. Guys, thanks for the supers. If you're here, please subscribe. You're on content for Padres fans. Um, Murray says, got to go for a while. Found out brother is cancer. Family has to come first. I love what you guys do. You're a class Jesus. act. God bless. And love to all I'm out. Murray 504, we are sorry to hear that. We are praying yeah. for you and your brother and your family. That is, um, we're really sorry to hear that. And we appreciate your support of this channel and the part of the community that you are because you're here all the time. Um, so let's get some prayers emojis in the in the comment section for Murray 504 and his family and his brother. Yeah. We are sorry to hear that. Thoughts and prayers with you, man. I, I, <clears throat> you got to do what you got to do with family. Um, take a take. Dude, don't worry about it, being part of the channel. Just go be with your brother. Yeah, and and we're, we'll we'll uh, pray for him, and your brother's going to get back healthy, and we'll see you on the other side, and hopefully the Padres are playing better when you come back as well. Um, no Name, thank you for the generous super chat. He says, quick favor, can you explain to the few fans that still don't understand the idea of why the Padres need to sell and the consequences of letting Hader and Snell leave for nothing in the offseason? Thank you. This was the back and forth we just went you know, we just had a moment ago and Jim agrees with me. He's just saying that the organization might not agree with us. There is no, there is no viable defense to not sell because selling is, is an admission of failure in 2023, but we don't need that admission. I can already see it. This team, there. I, I can, I can tell you that they've been a failure this year, but just because you're not good in 2023 does not mean you're not good in 2024. We've seen that countless times over in baseball with the expanded wild card. They could absolutely be a playoff team in 2024. You need to position yourself to be better in 2024 with the moves you make at the deadline in 2023. That's why I'm not moving on Soto. I think I got a better chance to win in 2024 with Soto than without. We could argue it, but um, I think they'd be foolish not to make some moves here at the deadline. I'm not saying sell off all parts, but I think they'd be foolish not to sell off parts at the deadline. <clears throat> uh, if you could... If you could package Cronenworth in a deal with Snell, would you do it? Yeah, of course. I, I don't. I'd be surprised if he could do that since he's a rental. Yeah, I'm just, I just. I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to think big here. Like the Cronenworth deal is a mistake. It just is. I mean, he's regressed every single year. I don't see how then any. I don't see how he didn't see. They didn't see this. You know, he's he's not right. going. He's not getting better. He's, he's getting not a worse. kid. Yeah, yep. and he's a 30 years old. So it's not getting better. He's getting worse. He's a two time All Star, but. I mean, come on, let's be real here. Those were like, you know, replacement all stars. So, if you it, the Snell and Hater thing, like you, you're going to get a lot for them just because Snell is easily, easily the best pitcher on the trade market right now. Not even close. Mm -hmm. And Hater is easily run away the best closer yeah. on the market. So you could theoretically get two top. 20 prospects maybe well well you're saying two top 20 in someone's organization or no, top no, no. 20 overall i think overall no like, chance in hell no chance no chance in hell Not for a for rental me. maybe one we'd have to look dude you'd have to look i mean give me some comps i mean it's like buying a know. house i, I need know. comps because maybe top 50 top 50 yeah, top yeah, t top hundred would be incredible. Top seventy five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, okay. top one hundred. That's top. Yeah, I mean, a top two, three prospect in someone's organization. Yeah, but a top twenty prospect in all of baseball. Maybe I mean, I, that to me seems a little aggressive. But I'm taking a top one hundred prospect for both of them, and I feel amazing. You yeah. know. Yeah, and, and, and I get two top one hundred prospects coming back. Yeah, I mean, controllable. Look, you look at what was traded for Hater. Um. Now he had a year of control left. I'm just trying to think of like comps of like maybe one. Yeah, year what did they trade guys. for Hater? A bunch of nothing. <laughs> yeah, there was no top twenty prospect in that deal. Yeah, a bunch of nothing for and that. They had a year and a half. Okay, so maybe Snell, maybe I'm, one I'm, top seventy five prospect. Yeah, for Snell. Snell. Snell should. I mean, Snell's a yeah. starter. 
But uh, Hater, you know, I think you get something for Hater. Don't get me wrong. I think you get something good, but I don't, I don't know how good. Dude, I can see it right now. I can fucking see it right now. Preller is having a post-trade deadline presser, and he's going to be talking about how they didn't find anything that could line up for them to trade Snell and Hater. Yeah, I'm just, that I'm doesn't just, make any sense. I know. I'm just seeing it right <laughs> now. Like, hey, look, we had some things lined up, but ultimately... Oh, but it was nice it to was, be able to move Carpenter. But ultimately, okay, it wasn't it wasn't what we were looking for for those two guys. We're not just going to trade guys to trade guys. We're going to look for what we want. No, that's great. Well, then they can go lose him in the offseason and get nothing. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Don't fucking get mad at me. I'm just I mean, telling you. Don't, I, don't, just I, be th- ready for I think they both move. I think they both move. They can publicly position themselves any way they want. They can go on MLB Network Radio and say they're going to win the World Series. Peter Seiler can say that AJ Preller is the best general manager in baseball history. Excellent. When when shit hits the fan and it's July 30th and you're looking at each other like, what are we going to do over the next 48 hours? You're moving pieces because you have no other option. When you get backed into a corner, you know what you do? You react to being in a corner. That's the corner they're going to be in. But I, but you, but they're going to, their thinking is, Hey, look, we're not going to just move a guy to move a guy. But it's not moving a guy to move a guy. I would take John Schaefer for like, Getting rid of these guys isn't isn't something better than nothing. What does Josh Hader serve? I know you're. I'm preaching to the choir. What value does Josh Hader have for a team that is ten games out of a playoff spot? Nothing. He's going to close I'm, games for whom? For, John, I'm just telling you for draft that, picks that, that 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 Preller is not just going to trade Snell and Hader just to get them off this team to get something in return. Yeah, they're going to look. Will. They're going to look <laughs> to get. A big time haul, and they will. They'll get a haul for Snell. They'll get something for Hater. He's going to be the GM in 2024. You and I both know it. It's in his best interest to improve 2024 at the right. expense of 2023. So that's, there, there's a difference there between just getting rid of a guy and getting rid well, of a guy you know to get a haul point. back. But I'm saying I would take anything, but that's not what's going to happen because Blake Snell's been the best pitcher in baseball, so they'll get a lot for him. And and you wouldn't do that though. You can't just trade Snell when he's at, the, at his peak for nothing. You have well, to. Get they're not going to get. You have to get some Snell. value. It's it, well, that's like saying, you know, of course they will. That's like saying you got to trade Shohei Otani and get value. I mean, Blake Snell's been incredible. Of course they're going to get value. Why wouldn't they? There's 20 buyers. The only way they wouldn't is if Preller, in his mind, has this like over the moon value. Okay, you might not get him. over the moon, but you might still get the moon. Well, I'm just saying, like, do you want to make a bet right now on the wrap up show? Because you you're coming at it from Preller. Doesn't see it the same way we are. They're <clears throat> positioned to buy. They're not selling Hater and Snell. I'll make a bet with you that both move. Now, I should get odds on that. <laughs> well, no, because I think that they should. I mean, look, do I think one of those guys is going to move at the deadline? Yes. And I think most likely it's going to be Hater. Because I think Snell, they could have this delusional like return mindset for this guy. Which I don't know if they're going to get, and then you're going to get the 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 cliche. Hey, we 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 tried to move him, and we couldn't get equal value for what we thought he was worth, and so we kept him. And we have Robert Suarez back, and we have this guy back, and we're going to try to you know make a run here. Blah 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 Dude, blah blah blah. Snell can already put the keys in with the landlord. He can he can send the email. I'm out August first. Okay, right. here's where here's where Done. I left the keys. The newspaper is going to stop delivery. Forward my mail. It's done. He's got to go because if you don't, he's got to go or he's going to go. You think he's he's got to go? He's so no, no, one hundred percent. He's gone right now. Well, I'm not AJ Preller, but yes, I mean, there's no scenario for me. No matter what happens, now he might have to go with Gary Sanchez because without Gary Sanchez, the guy's like not Superman. True, but he might have to go with Gary Sanchez. But he's got to go. JD Gatcher, thank you. He says, are these guys still living off last year's NLDS or NLCS? Um, Some people in this town are still living off of last year's NLDS. (laughs) I mean, I don't think anyone's really living off last year's NLDS. I mean, I don't know anyone that's like, we should celebrate last year still right now. But I mean, it happened. I know a couple. (laughs) Who? I'll put it in the private chat. (laughs) No, well, I'm going to then copy and paste it into the chat. I'm kidding. Who are you? Okay, let's see the private chat. (laughs) <laughs> that's okay that's maybe one that's fair <laughs> i mean i don't think they're living off last year i just think it's been a terrible no good awful rotten very bad year i don't know why and if i could explain it then yeah. they should be able to explain it nobody can explain it also i this i don't want to hear any of this bad luck shit that like i don't want to like 
these guys just weren't good this year. They just weren't good. They didn't perform. They didn't, haven't come through in the clutch. They haven't won more than three games in a row all season long. There's been bad move after bad move after bad move. Every single one of these players has played below their standards this year, which is amazing to me. And it's just, it's so disheartening because the once in a generation collapse, like this isn't a collapse because this has been shit all year long. Right. But like, you know, what what are you going to call this, Seidler? Once in a generation what? Like, are you, like enough of this bullshit, you know? It's it's the same. It's Two out of the last three years has been dog shit. So now you start looking at like, fuck, was last year like an outlier? Was last year like the lucky year? Yeah, I, I can see it both ways. I think they'll be fine in 2024, to be honest. As down as, as I am on them in 2023, I don't think they're... I'm not saying they're going to win 105 games in 2024, but I don't, I'm not going to go into 2024 if they do this right at the deadline in 2023 and tell you that I think this team's going to win 79 games in the rebuilding with Tatis and Machado and Pogarts and Soto. You know? I don't think do that's you, how I'm going to feel. Odds right now. Put the odds at this time next year. Are we talking about them trading off Soto or not? I say no. I think it's a great question. I say no, but I think it's a great question. Because I don't put it, I don't put it past this team. And no, I don't put, of course not. I don't like, put it past them. Like I I mean, I could easily see a scenario where it's July 16th, 2025, or 2024, excuse me. And we're talking about where should they trade Juan Soto? Oh, it's possible. It's <laughs> because those because possible. those rumors will fucking light the whole world on fire if this team is not good next well, year. Well, Soto could be dealt this year. I mean, it's it's possible. I wouldn't Man. do it, but he could be he could be dealt. I wouldn't do it either, but... He could be dealt, you know, Thursday. I mean, in and Toronto. You'll, and, you'll, and you'll get some pressure from outside people, and you get some pressure from, you know, idiot douchebag media members in Philadelphia that think that, like, they know everything and that their, like, sports knowledge is greater than everybody else's, and they'll have some stupid trade ideas and right. try to pressure managers into, you know, saying stuff, but... But he yeah. might be traded. I mean, it, I wouldn't be. do it. He could be traded. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. You got to know who you are. And we've all felt this. You know, you're chasing, a, you're, you're chasing a relationship. You're chasing a job. You're chasing a career. You're chasing a college choice. You know who you are. I know who this team is. I've watched them long enough to know that they're flawed. I'm not saying they can't play better than they have played. I think they can. But do I think they can play 660 baseball after playing four whatever baseball? I, I just don't. I just I don't believe that's going to happen. I really don't. Um, Tom, thank you for the super chat. He says, "No way we trade Soto, but we should if he isn't going to sign here." So the question of the night, which is in the chat, is would you move Juan Soto at the trade deadline? The, the reason, listen, I'm not I'm not telling you that I think Juan Soto is going to be here for the next decade because I don't honestly believe that. But I believe the Padres are built to win next year. I think they were built to win this year as well. I believe they're built to win next year. And I think by selling off Soto, you immediately signal that this is actually going to take beyond just another year. Now, not to say it's not impossible to sell them off. You bring back the right pieces. Maybe you make the right acquisitions in the off season, and maybe you are better. I mean, I guess that's absolutely possible. This guy leads the team in on base. He leads like baseball in on base. He leads the team in on base plus slugging. I just have a hard time believing that you get rid of Juan Soto and you improve your team in 2024. So I'm, I'm going into 2024 thinking I need to make the postseason, and I think he gives me a better chance of making the postseason than selling him off. And if you're trading Soto, that's also kind of – you're signaling that you're not super serious about next year either. Now, you you obviously are, but, like, you know, you have him under contract for next year. You're obviously trying to win next year. Wouldn't it be wise to just have that guy to help you win next year? And if you're not winning next year, then you trade him. Like, it's pretty simple. And if he's not going to sign here, he's not going to sign here. But the, 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 the quote was, we got him for three playoff runs. Right. You're probably not going to get him for one. I mean, for two, for three. And you're only probably going to get him maybe for two. So, like, you keep him while you can. And, and I like the core of this team. I do. I think that it's not the most cohesive group of people, right, with personalities and everything. But, like, they have good pieces to come back next year it's just something that preller failed miserably on this year just it just failed completely is the rounding out of the edges and the depth of this team has been a fucking disaster this year like and it's his just a team joke. 
and the team has let him down. And oh, I'll be critical of Perler. Way. But I, Kevin Acey on Friday was like, sixth inning are on, Bogarts, Machado, the big four. They all sucked. Sixth inning on in a representing a tying run or go ahead run. They're hitting 169 as a team head against the Philly series. They just are so anti clutch. And they've actually they've been the best hitting team with men in scoring position since June 22nd. They've been popping that graphic up. We've all seen it. Great. But again, in these big spots with a game on the line in extra innings, the same old start. They're 0 and 9. I mean, that's impossible. They're the only team in baseball without an extra innings win. They have a hit in extra innings today. Crazy. Uh, Jared, thank you. He says, my favorite thing about the season are all the middle-aged women who try to blame this season on Soto and Hater. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, Padre Facebook groups are naughty. So are, so is just social media in general. I understand the frustration, to be honest. I get it. Yeah, um, probably not the best idea to go on Padre's Facebook. Yeah, and I do think sometimes... Or Twitter. I think it's sometimes misguided in terms of like who's responsible for some of these issues. I mean, is it Melvin? Is some of that misguided? I would say yes, but some of it's fair. I mean, Soto, some of it's misguided for me. Maybe some of it's fair. Hater, I think a lot of it's misguided. What, he didn't pitch three straight days? I mean, he's got a one ERA. So, yeah, I mean, everyone's looking for an explanation and a reason why this has gone haywire. So that's how social media works. Yeah, I'm going to be very curious to see, like, what this team says and who they blame this on or what they blame it on or how they spin it. Like, it's just going to be fascinating to see their response to this season because right now it's the response has been pretty tame and kind of like everything's fine. (laughs) You know, you're right. I've seen play out here in the last like hour. I've seen a couple people be like, well, Juan Soto's got a 900 OPS because he walks a lot and gets on base a ton. And I see Michael G just put that in the chat. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's the point. I mean, he's on base a lot. It's hard to be critical of someone, the manner in which they, I mean, he's slugging 500 or near 500. He, I mean, he, he it's, there's no one, there's not even a close second right now to Juan Soto's ability to get on base for this team and his overall OPS. So, I mean, again, you look at his, look at what he was in DC. Yeah, he had better numbers at National Park, but it was a better hitter's park too. I mean, I think if Juan Soto had an OPS of 1,000 this year, this team would have like an additional win, maybe two. So it's not like Juan Soto's inability to have a 1,000 OPS, which would be higher than his career average, is the reason why this team is where they are. I don't know what people are asking of Juan Soto. He's some savior. I mean, Shohei Otani's no savior of the Angels, who are two games under 500. <laughs> the last three nights for the Angels has been hilarious. Crazy. Crazy. Shohei Otani. 35th home run of the year. They now trail 12 to 10. Yeah, exactly. It's so crazy. They won that game last night, by the way. I know they, they did. lost today. They did. But they hit a home run to, he hit a home run today. I know. It's so crazy. Uh, JD Gotcha, thank you again. He says Dodgers dealt for Manny Darvish Scherzer as rentals. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's why I think there's going to be a big market for rentals. There will be. It will be interesting to see. For sure, it it will. It'll be interesting, and I don't I don't know what comes of it. The really Padres don't. will. I mean, they'll be in the thick of things. Though that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Conversations, no doubt. Oh yeah, yeah. Lots of conversations. Thank you, RH, and thank you, Niles, who says Soto might be the worst outfitter in baseball. He one hundred percent cost them the first game on Saturday. That plane left. <laughs> he's not the worst outfitter in baseball. He's not good. We've. I mean, we said that all off season. We said that all off season. He's not a good fielder. He's a Gold Glove finalist but by the way they're not losing games because of their defense they're literally tops in baseball and defensive run saved right so like if you want to say that hey soto's losing them games well then kim is winning them games tatis is winning them games if you guys want to blame juan soto for this team's failures this year you can do that but i'm telling you right now you are blaming the wrong person and you're looking in the wrong direction this is not a singular player's fault. This is an organizational wide failure from top to bottom. Everybody, it is not on one player. Okay. It's not on all, it's not all on Manny. It's not all on Soto. It's not all on Tatis. It's not all on Bogarts. It's not all on Hader. It's not all on uh, Melvin, right? It's not all on, I mean, a lot yeah. of it's on Preller, but like everybody deserves blame for this. And if, you guys want to just single out one dude for this shit team? You are completely off base here, and you have no idea like what you are talking about. I'm sorry. 
It is a team failure end discussion. Look at it this way. If you trade Soto in two weeks and you get a quote-unquote haul, at best, it's a wash. <laughs> you know, because you got rid of five premier prospects, theoretically. Theoretically, Mackenzie Gore is going to start for a long time in the big leagues, right? C.J. Abrams is going to start for a long time. You would think in the big leagues, James Wood, consensus top 10 prospect in baseball and others. It's like you're not going to get that haul because that was with two and a half years of control. So now it's one year and two months of control. So you'll get a maybe comparable haul, but less. So you're going to get rid of Soto after a year. Yeah, you had a playoff run, which is nice. And you're going to your return is going to be less than what you gave for him a year ago. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just no. doesn't make any sense to me. I'm riding the thing out for another year because I'm trying to win a World Series. I'm not just trying to, you know, be more competitive in 2027 because I just don't care. So I still think 2024 gives them a chance to be good uh, despite this train wreck. And it's been a train wreck in 2023. But just because it's a train wreck in 2023 doesn't mean it's the exact same thing in 2024. Sports just don't work like that. But also, um, it's, been a train yeah. wreck with this, it's been a train wreck with this franchise under Preller for way too many years. Yeah, not last year, but year before. Got it. Shit, um, Scott, thank you. He says, all Preller did was replace Bell and Myers with Bogarts and Tatis from an NLDS team. Why is he to blame? They just aren't clutch. On-field problem, not front office. What's your reaction to that, Jim? Um, have you seen the catching position? Now, granted, uh, Gary Sanchez came in here and he's done a lot better. Um, but you had Austin Noll behind the plate way too long. You gave... Matt Carpenter, a two-year deal. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay. You gave Nelson Cruz a one-year deal. You had to DFA the guy. Um, what else? Oh, you had no depth in your organization. So you had to bring in Rugnid Odor. Okay. You still have Trent Grisham on this team. You are relying on the guys in the bullpen, like a Brent Honeywell. The 80 Tom, million for Cronenworth is pretty egregious. And Tom Crossgrove. And whoever and, and whoever else is in that freaking bullpen, like Tim Hills in big time situations, way too many times this year. And oh, and like you just said, oh, by the way, you gave a declining player in his 30s an $80 million contract. And and to top it off, you have nobody in your system. That's true. That is ready to play at the big league level and contribute right now. And then the other guy that you drafted with a first round draft pick has had the worst ERA in the history of the Padres organization from the start of the franchise to now. And that is Ryan Weathers. His career is ERA. Based his, on, wait, you're saying in this many innings or more? His career ERA, John, is the worst in Padres history. What is it, like seven? It's a seven something ERA. For his career. So, again, you tell me why it's not Preller's fault. I mean, I tend to be more Team Scott than Team Jim. Like, you're always that, team whoever else. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, but of course, he's accountable for this. I mean, he literally said it on the radio two weeks ago like, I'm the one that's responsible for this roster. So, if they don't perform, it's on me. That doesn't mean it's going to cost him his job. Scott, to your point, I mean, Preller's probably going to be back because his owner, Peter Seiler, has been very faithful to him. Excellent. I think a lot of organizations. This- Excellent, John. If this is Boston, he's gone. If this is LA, he's gone. Yeah, if um, it's a serious franchise, he's gone. Yeah, but here he's going to stay in all likelihood. I mean, I guess if the wheels completely fall off and they do finish 70 and 92 or something, which could happen. If this team give a shit about winning, Preller's gone two years ago. Let's be real here. But it's like if they don't care about winning, why are they? I mean, they're going to Bob Melvin's going to be the problem, and they're going to replace him with. Again, I said, hey, look, if if they fire Bob Melvin, I will every single day for the rest of the year say AJ Preller needs to be fired, because that is such an indictment on this team to get rid of the manager. <laughs> Again, <laughs> are you kidding me? It's tough to figure out, guys. I mean, it's it's weird stuff. I mean, I go back to Dennis Lynn's article at the end of 2021 in The Athletic. Find it if you're a subscriber. That was a complete and utter indictment on everything within the organization under A.J. Preller. Now, what happened from that point on is they put together a nice 12 months. wasn't perfect, but the way it finished in the National League Championship Series, it kind of it erased them a lot. time yeah. and eliminated basically what, what Dennis had sourced in that article. Saying, you know what? Maybe he's overcome this somehow just with sheer talent. 
Um, and then here you are 12 months later and you're like, oh my gosh, everything that Dennis wrote in 2021 is like spot on. So like, is, is what Dennis wrote spot on is 2022 spot on. Is it somewhere in the middle? Um, but it's not good. I mean, Preller's tenure is, is highly questionable <laughs> at this point based on what's played out in front of our eyes. But I, I get Scott's point. I do. Uh, Luis, thank you um, for the super. And Luis says, uh, Soto won't play in San Diego, whether this season or next. He's not the it guy on Manny's team. Meanwhile, Melvin failed to comprehend big picture problems. You need to follow up on this. I, I don't know what Melvin failed to comprehend with this team, and I'm sure there are things that he did fail to comprehend. I think that's fair. I don't know about the Soto and Manny dynamic, Jim. I don't know if it's perfect or, or not perfect. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be surprised if Juan Soto was here beyond 2024, the way this tenure has worked out to this point. I just think that for a team with as big of a personality as Manny Machado, knowing that it is his team, I'm not saying that like this is the reason why, but just like it feels like when you put another big personality in that clubhouse who is a also a leader, like he the Nationals were Juan Soto's team. They just were. And so now he has to play second fiddle to Manny. Like, I don't know if that suits Juan Soto well. Yep. You know, it's 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 like this isn't MLB the show where you can just fucking put a bunch of dudes on a team that are all 99s. You know, like personalities matter. And the meshing of these personalities so far this year feels like it doesn't work. And then, oh, by the way, Let's add another personality, another guy who was the team leader to this team as well, and, and Xander Bogarts. So you're asking two guys that are, you know, big parts of your team to recalibrate their entire way of thinking for however long in the big leagues that they were that they've been in. You know, like like Bogarts is, I mean, that was Bogarts' team in Boston. You know, I don't care. I mean, Devers might be the better player, and he probably is, but that was Bogarts' team. And the same thing with Soto. The the Nationals weren't good the last couple of years. Soto was there, but like he was the guy, you know. And same thing with Bogarts. And now you put him in a situation where they're not over. They're not going to overtake Manny. They're just not because this is Manny's team. He's been here since 2019, and, and that whole dynamic just I don't. I mean, we didn't see it. We didn't talk about it. Like none of us did. We never talked about the personalities meshing well. We just thought that, oh, this is great. No, but that many alphas, I mean, it's it's reasonable to think you'd have problems. I mean, you got you got like international stars with someone like a Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado and Juan Soto. I mean, you got you got high level. I mean, forget the money. You got you got future hall, you have multiple Hall of Famers. Manny Machado, 300 home runs this weekend. Congrats. Um, if you're watching, Manny. Hall of Famer. You got Juan Soto Hall of Famer. You got multiple Hall of Famers. You'd have three if Tatis didn't take PDs, potentially. Um, but shoot, Bogart's at the end of his career with multiple titles and 20-year career. Who knows? Maybe borderline guy. That's a lot. And they didn't all come up together. And just big personalities, and they're not winning. And it's relatively new for all of them. Tatis wasn't here last year. It's just, I don't know. It just hasn't worked out well. I, I guess if everything was working out perfectly, maybe it would be like a downhill snowball. But it's not that. It feels like they're doing work. Like it's hard. Um, and, and I do think there's something about the dynamic with this team. And I've said it since literally like the end of April. I'm like, this team's not right. And they just haven't looked right. And that continues to this point where they just have not looked right. And yep. it's a shame. And I don't know who's at who's to blame for that, if it's one individual or multiple individuals, but um, to pretend as if the dynamic has had no bearing on this team yeah. when they spend every ounce of every second together for seven consecutive months, it's just, you know, th those, those things matter. Relationships matter. And for whatever reason, this has not been the most perfect clubhouse in baseball. And maybe it's because they've been losing since the season has started. Yeah. I mean, think, think about like, you know, I'm trying to think of an example, uh, I don't know, like like in radio, right? You bring in a like if Colin Cowherd came in tomorrow. I'm just throwing like an example, right? Put locally. him on like locally and like put him on like I don't know, like Darren Show, right? Like 
like that's Darren's show. But and then Colin's going to feel weird about this whole thing, like oh, I'm coming into the situation and I don't want to be the man because you know this is this is this guy's show and I'm used to being the man and. How does this whole thing work? It's just going to feel weird. It's going to just be a weird dynamic. It's probably a bad, you know, example. But like, I'm trying to think of if you're in your workplace and you're the you're the man, right, or the woman, mm-hmm. and you bring in somebody who's this, yeah, you know, was in your course. position, but you have to work together now. It's like, wait a second, I'm the guy that make the shots. Like, no, yeah. I was the guy that make the shots. Like, it's just a weird thing. Yeah, it's a great, it's a perfect analogy. I think you're that's spot on. 